the ever-elusive dachshund, affectionately known as the sausage dog, has occupied these woods for over 50 years now. A domesticated breed now turned wild, some say feral, were introduced to the wood by a large-scale breeder. Thelma Ann Watson, who lived in a farmhouse nearby, was said to at one point have nearly over 200 dachshunds living on the farm. It is said that at this time, many in the nearby local village had deemed that her fanaticism would create an untenable situation for the dogs. True in their prediction, the dachshunds started to spill over and inhabit the forests of the area. These once domesticated dogs had now started breeding in the wild, fending for themselves and becoming a thriving population of wild dogs. The only threat now posed to this beautifully balanced ecosystem is the local authorities' logging activity, which has been called under scrutiny due to overlogging and destruction of wildlife habitats. Two brothers, bonded by their love for animals, and the fact that they are brothers, moved to the area two years ago to protest the destruction and its effect on the Dachshund population. Here, our crew visits Richard Barnes, one of the brothers who has set up camp in the local woods to observe wild Dachshund activity. Richard has lived under these conditions for two years. His companion in all this, a rescued wild Dachshund named Martha. Our crew will now be following Richard through the Welsh countryside to get a first-hand glimpse of these extraordinary creatures. All right, real nice to meet you fellas. Okay, all right, do you find the place all right? Yeah? Okay, cool, let's check it out. So, what do you think of the place? It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, I built her myself. Yeah, been here two years now. Yeah, no running water, no electricity, no TV. <laughs> uh, it gets pretty rough sometimes, you know, I got my sleeping bag, medicine box, and, you know, as much clothes as I can fit in there, really. And that's uh, that's all you really need, though. And Martha, of course. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Richard's brother, Jamie, seen here at their head of operations, was made aware of the ongoing issues by Richard and promptly made the move from Canada to Wales. Hi, so I'm uh, Rick's brother, Jamie. Rick's already been down here quite a while. I only just recently moved over from Canada. So uh, me and Rick were actually split up at quite a young age. Rick moved down to the States whilst I stayed in Canada. The funny thing is, even with the distance between us, we always shared the same love and appreciation for animals. So when I heard about the work he was doing down here, I just had to get involved. You know. Giving Martha a walk. She uh, she's in heat, so she's got to stay on the lead. Otherwise, she goes looking for it. <laughs> uh, and also, she likes to chase the sheep. Better off she's on the lead. Is that right, Martha? Good girl. So uh, I've had Martha for a while. She was a wild dachshund, and uh, well, um, we met one day in the woods. She was in a bit of trouble, and uh, well, needless to say, I, I just helped her out a bit. And ever since, we've been best buds. Yeah, so if you, if you listen carefully, uh, you can hear the loggers in the background. Drives uh, Martha crazy, as you can see. A lot of horror stories there for both of us. I mean, what she's seen and what I've found over the past two years, it's been a lot. It's okay, girl. Come on, let's get going. Come on. Good girl.
Right, so um, this is how we actually, you know, get the trackers onto the actual dogs. We use uh, little Martha here. <laughs> She's in heat. Uh, we use her as bait. Uh, yeah, the little fellas, they get a whiff and they come running up and that's when me and my assistant, we grab them. Uh, so, yeah, and then we, you know, we tag them and we can track them that way. So, real fortunate to have Martha with us, aren't we? Isn't that right, girl? Good girl. Okay, uh, I think first of all, I'd just like to thank the, the channel of British Broadcasting. Uh, we wrote to you not too long ago, and you're already here. So um, that was quite a surprise. Obviously, due to COVID-19, there's been travel restrictions, and uh, you guys are focusing on domestic cases. Um, so while we're not happy COVID-19's here, we sure are glad you're here. So anyway, we're about to hit some spots um, not too far from here. So just follow me. Okay. Much like the badger, which they helped humans hunt, the wild dachshund's dominant prey are rodents, such as pocket gophers, ground squirrels, moles, prairie dogs, wood rats, deer mice, and voles. Here we see Niles whimper impatiently, as he has found the scent of prey. Okay, so, uh, right, so, very interesting. You see, uh, you see these here? They're, uh, sort of half imprintations in the dirt. And, uh, it looks like they very much could be Bigfoot track. Uh, we are aware that he most likely wears a size 16 boot. Very interesting stuff. Anyway, let's get back to the dog. Yeah, so, uh... We've actually been following this little guy for a while now. Um, he's real cute. He reminds me of like a little bear or something. And uh, we named him Niles. Like uh, from the TV show Frasier. Love Frasier. Great show. Wow, just some great sightings there, guys. Wow, I can't wait to see that footage. Um, so, dachshund actually means badger hound, and uh, they were bred to hunt badgers. So with their long bodies, they, they sort of get under these burrows with their claws, and they can they can dig out what's ever in there. And actually what's happened with this, this wild population of dachshund is they've sort of taken over some of these badgers' burrows. So they sort of kick them out, but they I think they've now figured out how to make their own burrows, which is super cool. I mean, the stuff that you learn. Jeez Louise. Anyway, let's see what let's see what we can find. Come on, let's go. Oh, just look at this. With everything that's going on, like we need this as well. You know, I, I hope it's kids, because adults should be smart enough not to be doing stuff like this. Like we, like we need litter as well with the problems we got, you know. Pick up your litter, kids. Seriously. All right, you guys get a pass, but you older guys, breaking bottles and stuff like that. Not cool. Seriously not cool. Here, this young father's cries. Here, and happening now, you can see the real horrors of wildlife devastation. Caused by greed-filled landowners with no consideration for these creatures' habitat. Well, you know, as you could see there, the dog was getting pretty upset. 
they, they filled his burrow. So he's got nowhere to live. And God knows how many babies were down there. He's still here just trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> As you can see, things out here just aren't right. Um, I, I'm probably going to have to take him back with me, honestly. Uh, you, you probably stay with Jamie for a bit. We'll give him some shelter and make sure he's all right. All right, come on, let's get out of here. You know... It really pains me to see my brother reacting to stuff like that. These beautiful creatures are being affected. People need to react to this unjust deforestation. People need to look into this. I'm glad we're filming. Jamie presses on with his work, alerting wildlife watchdog groups of the local authority's decision to have logging continue in these forests despite its impact upon the dachshund population. But what of the dachshund? What of his struggle? When will it end? An especially cold winter has arrived in Wales. The wild dachshund of the wood will need to keep their numbers up if they are to pass Mother Nature's test. The crew visits Martha and Richard once again at his camp before setting off. You're all right, Rick. It must be quite cold in there. I tell you what, boys. It is freaking freezing in there. Martha! Right, let's get moving. It's too cold. I need to start moving. Martha, come on, you're coming with Daddy today. We're tracking. Martha, go on, girl. Look, she's already at it. Jesus Christ. Yep, there she goes. Okay guys, pretty cold out here. Uh, if you look at this, well those are my tracks. <laughs> but check this out. That is definitely what you can see there. Dachshund track. We're getting close. Right, so uh, Martha's off the lead today. She's no longer in heat, so uh, she's been helping us track, which is pretty cool. And she's already helped us find something. Let me show you here what we got. Martha, what's this? What'd you find? Show them what you found. See, she's a good girl. She sniffs them out. I mean, she is one of them. Pretty cool stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, she's, we couldn't do this stuff without her, you know? We use her as bait. We use her as a tracker. It's a good little dog. Winter is harsh and food is scarce. Here we see Niall's brother Fraser forage for what little he can find. He has not been lucky enough to find his prey today. He instead will have to make do with insects, bulbs, seeds, berries and earthworms. So, um, Rick, do, do you head into town much? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Some good partying down there. Um, you guys are going to make me look good, right? The ladies will love you. Yeah? Right on. The wild docks in Niles, rescued by Rick after the destruction of his burrow, has taken residence with Rick's brother Jamie. Niles will be on a course of rehabilitation till he is deemed fit to go back to the wild. Jamie has been kind enough to film and document his progress. Hey 
you there, buddy. You're right. <laughs> oh. Oh, it looks like it's morning time. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing you're hungry. Hey. That's pretty affectionate. <laughs> Aren't you? Oh dear. So, uh, last night was our first night together. <laughs> um, I made us a, a bed on the floor, because I didn't really want a wild dog in my bed. <laughs> uh, good boy. All right. Let's go get you some food, eh? You hungry? Oh. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Well, he's not exactly house trained. He had me up half the night. And, uh, well, I kept finding these green knotted strings in his excrement. Lo and behold, I'm pretty sure the little bastard's feral. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can wake him up, eh? Right, come on then. All right. Whoa. Good morning to you. Let's get you on some kibble, eh? Mm -hmm. There you go, fella. Good as a boy. Well, Obviously, since Niles is meant to maintain dominance over the house, uh, I'm going to have to eat after him. Right, so whilst Niles stays with us, it's important that he maintain his dominance as he would in the wild. So uh, my, my duties sort of to him are uh, daily grooming. Admiration. And submission. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so in the winter, it's real important that we keep the numbers up because that's how these guys stay warm. Um, they get in the burrow, obviously that's one part, but them all huddling together, uh, you know, to create that warmth with their tiny little bodies, you know, it's a major difference. And plus, family's important. We should always stick together. Rockin' around the Christmas tree, have a happy holiday. Ka -do, ka -do, ka -do. <laughs> oh, wait a second, buddy. The phone's ringing. Here we go. Oh, hey, Dad. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, there, there's quite a bit of snow here. No, not like back home. <laughs> oh, um, here, just a second. Rick's here. Well, when Rick was younger, he was always a pretty heavy set kid. Um, so was my grandfather, actually. I think it sort of ran in the family. Um, the shame is, my dad's always been a bit of a bully. So uh, he's pretty hard to put up with, even I'll admit that. I think that's part of the reason mom took Rick and moved down to the States. She just had enough. Hey, Dad. No, no, I'm not working with electricity yet. Well, I don't see how that's any of your business. Yeah, um... 
it's no secret that uh, me and my dad never got along well. Um, I was a very unhappy child. Uh, I may not have looked like it, but I was. I suffered with food addiction, um, and later in life, addiction to adult entertainment. And my dad was never proud of me. He still isn't. And obviously, I moved away with mom, and Jamie stayed with dad. And that's that was sort of the split. Well, my dad and Rick never did see eye to eye. I like to think that's only because Rick was never round long enough to grow to his eye level. If they could just try and start to be a part of each other's lives now, maybe they could look one another in the eye and, well, uh, break the tension. Well, no, not really, Dad. Listen, Mom doesn't want to talk to you. No, I can't tell you where she lives. Oh, come on. Yeah, you know what, Dad? You've always been an arsehole. Yeah, yeah, really. Who marries and bangs a woman with the same name as his own mother? No through road. That's exactly what we need to tell these loggers. This is a no through road for them. Hopefully the local authority can get behind what we're trying to do here. God help us if they can. Uh, you know, Jimmy, I've struggled with addiction myself. Uh, you don't seem to be able to keep that camera steady. You need a drink or something, bud? You know, there's an AA not too far away. Just get yourself checked out, man. Seriously. Razor desperately follows the trail of his prey. He must find a meal that can feed his many bitches and the countless young he has fathered. Unfortunately, his skills in procreating are far greater than his skills in hunting. With the sun's light fading, the danger of running into his rival, the badger, is increasing. With population numbers dwindling, hunting grounds ravaged by deforestation, and his lack of experience, the sad truth is, the many young he has sired will more than likely perish. We now head to the local village to ask locals what their opinion is of Richard's efforts, and how aware actually are they of the dachshund population. Well, in all honesty, I reckon he's an eat silly bastard. I piss off him till I post this letter. Well, yeah, I think what they're doing is great. I mean, it's a shame someone had to come all the way over from the States just to, uh, well, take matters into their own hands. C can I just say, I think it's absolutely wonderful what they're doing. Because um, we are all God's creatures, aren't we? Um, in fact, c can I just say a prayer real quick for you? Um, Lord... We are all blessed by your glory. Oh, no, I don't like him. No, no, those little things. Mm. You see, because I'm a man. I like a big dog. Someone says, little dog, big dog. I say, big dog, because I'm a man. I see him, I shoot him. Hello. Hey, you all right, boys? What's that there? All right. They're just feeding the birds, like. Uh, do you know Rick? Oh, yeah. I know the one. You've met before? Yeah, I reckon he's a mental case. He is a recovering addict. <laughs> addict for what? He suffers from food addiction and addiction to adult entertainment. You can get addicted to that. Well, you can get addicted to anything. Well, hearing that, boys, truth be told, 
I just might be addicted to jam roly polies and soft core porn. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's no secret that um, I suffer from addiction, food addiction, and adult entertainment addiction, as I said before. Um, it never led to the, neg the neglect of my animals, uh, but it did cause problems at work. There was a time where I couldn't even be near a computer. Um, so being off the grid out here, it's really helped, you know. There's, you know, like I said, no electricity. And, uh, you know, Jamie's asked me to come and move in with him sometimes when it's cold like this. But I, I just don't think I'm ready yet. What? What's that? You mean to tell me I've had snot dripping in my mustache this whole time? Was it still there? Jimmy, what the frick, man? Not cool. You need to get to a meeting, bud. Well, all right, screw it. Come on, let's go. Spring has come, and with it, a new hope for the dachshund. We head back out with Richard for more sightings and to check on the population's number. Get a breath of that country air. Read the beauty of the everywhere. Mother Nature, she feels my eye and I feel her. Gotta love the Beach Boys. Ah. Right, so uh, we're back at the beginning of the trail. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for letting me have a shower at the hotel. It's not often I get one. Um, though I like living like a wild dog, I sure don't like looking like one. <laughs> all right, come on. <laughs> Let's get going. Oh, man. Right, so I could tell the dog was leading us somewhere and check it out. It's where these logging bastards go to the toilet. So what I've done is uh, got about five pounds of cat litter and uh, clogged each toilet. They could be flushing anything down today, eh? Martha struggles. Her trauma is still very much alive. Richard has done well to rehabilitate her from the horrors in which he found her. She suffers great pain through the work she and Richard hope to accomplish. Jamie has informed us Niles is now almost fully recovered and will be free to return to the wild any day now. Uh, right, so... I'd like to take a moment to address something. My brother Jamie tells me the trailer for the documentary has been released on the internet. Apparently, people are commenting, there's no such thing as wild dachshund. Folks, let me tell you now, the footage you've seen is of wild dachshund under threat from deforestation, okay? It pains me to think, well, that people think, I'm just some jackhole out here in the woods Filming his dog with his harness off for some crap. I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. Honestly. Well, looks like that time's come. Niles is ready to go back. Looks like he doesn't need me anymore. He's still following me, though. Right, come on. Let's go. Good boy. Well, come on, boy. Keep her coming.
Some log lies in a stack. Some log ain't gonna grow today. Back home, they put him to the fire, where all dead trees look the same. Sorry, I'm a bit of a Kinks fan. Right, come on! This is what is left of the area which Niles had previously lived in. Jamie had not wished for Niles to see what had become of his home. Niles, however, had wandered straight back. Jamie will move him further on to a part of the forest where trees have been replanted and started to grow. I know. I know. Makes me cry too. <laughs> well, as you can see, the trees have started to grow back. Ready for Niles to make a new home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to miss him. I sure can't say I did my best for him. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Jamie walks home with a heavy heart. A battle won, the fight not done. Fortunately, fortune favors the brave. Through Richard and Jamie's diligence, what was due has now come. Arriving only a month after Niles was released to the wild. Finally, finally, someone is listening. A case has been brought through to the court which has caused all logging activity to be ceased effective immediately. With the amount of documentation and evidence gathered, I don't see things going back to the way they were. I'm certain. Okay. Um. I've just had word off my brother Jamie that uh, because of the documentary, word has reached pretty far. Um, this is being recorded right now, but um, by the time the film comes out, uh, these little guys might not need as much help as they do right now. Um, I, I think that word's finally reaching the right people. Uh, I'm, I'm over the moon, honestly. I just, I'm so happy. That, um, thank, thank you for all your support, guys, honestly. It means a lot to me. Turn the camera off, please. We here at the Channel of British Broadcasting are honoured to have witnessed and documented the heroic pair's efforts. However, in the grand scheme of things, everything comes with a price. And some cost. Well, it seems the little stunt Rick played with the cat litter and loggers' transportable toilets has got him into some trouble. He's actually spending time at a prison up north in England. Apparently the prisons more local to us are suffering from overcrowding, undoubtedly because of COVID-19. Um, we've been keeping in contact, though. He's got a phone on him. Not quite sure how, but... Uh, Oh, gee. Oh, ga, 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 ga. Oh. Hmm. 
You're listening to Alan's Jailhouse Rock. And now for the super men of steel, Steely Dan, with their classic Deacon Blues. They got a name for the winners in the world, and I want a name when I lose. God, I love that song. I never thought pouring cat litter into some porta johns would have me ending up in a place like this. But uh, it's been a while since I had a place where I could shower and shave without the temptation of technology, so I am enjoying it to a degree. Um, I'm glad it's a UK prison, because Lord knows with a broom like this, I'd be getting plenty of attention in the American prison system. Well, hey, Rick. How's it going up there? I'm doing fine, thanks. I've uh, been doing a lot of reading. Got a nice library here. Oh, that's good. Don't worry, I'm not using it again. Besides, only the fellas who work the library can use the computer. All right, Rick. Uh, well, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. But your commissary bill's getting unaffordable. You're gonna have to cut back on the Mars bars and Snickers. How's my girl? Is she okay? Well, I didn't want to tell you this over the phone. I was gonna wait till visiting day. But... So we've had the pleasure of Niles returning back to the house. And let's just say Martha's had twice the pleasure. Rick's little girl's got herself knocked up. <laughs> well, let's be equal now. Uh, shouldn't say herself. Niles had something to do with it, too. Lord knows how much I miss Martha. I've been sending her packages to let her know I've been thinking of her. My sentence is only six months, so I just keep telling myself. I'll be out of here before I know it. Here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Looks like there's a package for you, girl. <laughs> Let's see. What you dig in there? See what you can find, eh? Who's it from? Who's it from? Go on. Have a look. <laughs> Here, you want some help? Just a moment. Just a moment, girl. Jesus. Here, uh, twofer. Oh, would you look at that? That's beautiful. We'll put that on you later today, eh? Good morning. I'd just like to say how happy I am with the public's response to the documentary. We've received nothing but love and kindness from you all. Uh, we thank you for your presence, your continued support. And I'd just like to say to all the youngins out there, uh, always remember to fight for what's right. Um, and to those of you struggling, like the great Sly Stone said, ever feel like nobody? Remember you're nobody else, okay? Remember who you are, all right? Um, <clears throat> and to uh, my fellow lady dachshund lovers, keep sending those photos. Life is now thriving in the forest that once lived in terror. Mechanical horrors no longer echo into the distance. Mother Nature now can be heard. The creatures of the wood can now start to rebuild what they had lost. The dachshund may not stand tall, but proud he does. Richard eagerly awaits the end of his sentence. 
wanting to return home and get back to observing wild docks and activity. The crew visits him from time to time with footage, showing what progress has been made. People keep asking me, Rick, was it worth it? You're damn right it was.